Michael Hader from Expanse VR, and this is the second episode in our Shader Graph series for Unity. In the previous episode, we learned what a shader was, how to set up our first shader graph, and how to connect our first node in shader graph. And in this episode, we're going to be expanding on that a little bit further and explaining in more detail how each of the nodes interact with each other. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and of course click that notification button down below to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new tutorial for you. So first thing we need to do, um, if we do a little bit of a recap of our previous episode, is a reminder that with our shaders, there are two main components to it. The vertex shader, which is covered by these three here in our master node, and our fragment shader, which is covered by these three nodes here. With our fragment shader portion, it's very important to understand the concept that for 99% of the calculations and information being passed around are gonna be of values of zero to one. And this can be a little bit confusing because if we look at our color node here and bring up the color picker, you can see that the values are in RGB space and are of a value of 0 to 255. But when we start doing our calculations and passing this information to other nodes, we're actually going to be passing it as a value of uh, 0 to 1. So as an uh, idea, with say the alpha channel here, where it's saying 255, we'll actually pass this across to the next node as a value of 1. And if it's down to 0, we will pass this as a value of 0. And in between here at 122-ish, that's roughly gonna be 0 0.5 with uh, the value that we pass through. And everything that we do from here on in is gonna be of those values. So just keep that in mind as we go forward. And actually we'll return that back to 255 because we're gonna need that. So to demonstrate this a little bit further, what we can do is add our very next node, which is a split node. So if you remember, you right click to bring up the menu, click create node. We're going to search split and trust me with the whole search thing as you use shader graph more and more you'll find that a lot easier and more intuitive to use so what we can do is plug in the output of our color node into our split node and remember when i was saying in the previous episode that the four here uh, signifies the fact that there are four channels being outputted and our split node here can actually represent that very well so you can see the four channels being outputted here RGB and alpha and if we look in our color picker line that up you can see that that comes out perfectly there are our four channels and again these are going to now be values of 0 to 1 and if we then connect our alpha output into our alpha here nothing's changed but if we now go to our color picker again and we start changing our alpha value nothing happens. Why is that? Well, part of the master node here is setting up what sort of shader it is. And by default, it's going to be an opaque shader, meaning that it is non-transparent. Opaque obviously being the opposite of transparent. So if we click on the gear icon here, we can bring up another one of our menus. And if we go to surface, we change it from opaque to transparent. Now, if we click on the value here and change it, you can see in our main preview that it's slowly becoming transparent. Let's click that away here. And we would automatically assume that when we plug our blue output into the color, that it's going to turn, keep the blue value. But it doesn't. It gives us a white. Why is this? Well, remember I said before that this information here is being passed as zero to one, and zero to one, and the color here requires three inputs to do the mixing to create our color. So all it's receiving at the moment is one channel of a value of zero to one, in this case one, and in shader graph one is represented as white. And we can show this a little bit further by going to our next node, which is a preview node. And the preview node acts in the exact same way as our main preview, except for the main preview is connected to our master node and shows what's happening here. This simply shows what value is being plugged into it. So for instance, we'll grab our blue and plug it into here. 
and plug that into our color. And as we can see, this is white. And if we bring up our color picker and we look at our blue channel, you can see that's 255. And what did we say before? A value of 255 is one and one equals white. As we slide this down to black or to zero, I should say, black has been displayed because zero represents uh, black represents zero. And if we sit it in between about the 122, which is about 0 0.05, we get a medium gray. And this is the power of shader graph in the fact that all the mass that we were doing will be displayed in a visual way for us to make it a lot easier to be intuitive about what we want to do and be very creative. So if we now took our alpha and plugged it into here, bring our color straight over so we can get our color back. Change it to something else because we're getting a little bit bored of it. So we'll get a nice hot pink. Plug our preview into our alpha channel. So we're getting now a preview of what our alpha is being represented. So it's being represented as one. Again, click on our color node. We're gonna change this to something a little bit less down here. So we're about 0 0.03, if you think about it in the terms of our zero to one value we now get a semi-transparent pink. And if we save the asset, we can see that in our scene, that we now have a semi-transparent pink object. Lastly, to just demonstrate how this all works and to use our next node and a very important node again, we're gonna bring in a vector one node. Now, technically speaking, this is actually outputting a vector four, so four channels. And here we have vector one, so one channel of information. And just to clarify, when dealing, say in Unity or C Sharp, um, with a vector, a vector normally has a direction and a magnitude. But in shaders and shader graph, a vector is simply just a value, most often a float value. You can change what sort of value it is here in the, uh, if you click on the, um, the cog icon, we can have an inherent float or half. And if we go to Unity and look at the documentation, this will actually explain to us what these different values mean. But just know for the most part, that for if you're developing for a PC or a high-end console like the PlayStation or Xbox, you're 99% of the time going to be working with floats as it doesn't really matter. If you're looking to work, develop for mobile, you're going to try and work with halves because there is a little bit of a performance boost. Um, but you've got to be careful about where and when you use halves. And if you go back to that documentation, it will let you know when are the best times to use it but it's a little bit more in depth than we really need to go in this stage. For the most part, the default is inherent and Shader Graph does a very good job of making sure that we have the right value when we need it. So instead of using our split, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna plug in our vector one into here and we're gonna use this to manipulate our alpha again. So let's get this back up to one. But as you could see, because it's a vector and a vector can be any number, um, or not any number, but very high values that we'll never need to get to. We can go negatives, we can go into very high positives. For what we're using here, zero and one are the only values and everything in between. Everything else is just really wasted value. So here we'll go back to what we use, 0.03, oops, sorry, 0.3 to get our gray, and there we go. If we save our asset, we have a semi-transparent uh, image again. So that's where we're gonna leave us for this uh, episode. So we've covered now our color node, our split node, our preview node, and our vector node. And we've started to manipulate the information that we have from our color, giving us uh, control over our alpha channel. And later on, we're gonna um, get further into that. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share to help grow our beautiful Unity community. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button below to make sure you get to see our next video. See you shortly.